to specific. Uh, to begin with, we have the general layers of the skin that are made up of, uh, of the cutaneous membrane right here, or here in this model. Cutaneous membrane is the, also referred to as the epidermis. It has uh, either five or four layers, depending if it's thick or thin skin. Uh, you can see right here along that line, there is a, uh, there is a, a extra layer of um, cells that are added. This is a composite slide. You can also see that here in the older model. Uh, this would be referred to as the stratum lucidum, and that would indicate thick skin, as you can see here, and no hair follicles would be present in thick skin, uh, like we see in this model right here. So uh, if it's five layers in the epidermis, um, or four layers, uh, we'll discuss that in a moment, that's thick and thin skin, uh, depending on location in the body. Usually, though, there would be hair follicles and thin skin associated with it. Below the epidermis, or the connecting the epidermis here to the, uh, to the dermis below would be the epidermal pegs that we see here coming down from above. And then uh, coming up from below, we have the dermal papillae, and the dermal papillae are what form your fingerprints, for example, like we see here. Right? These, are, these are dermal papillae and these are epidermal pegs and that links the dermis to the epidermis. Uh, the dermis is the largest layer of the skin. It's going to contain all of the, the specialized functional units like the glands that you see here. This uh, American gland or sweat gland that thermoregulates. You've got the hair follicle as well. The layers of that hair follicle. The specialized erector pili muscles, sebaceous glands, uh, piscinian corpuscles, and all of these specialized structures are in the thickest layer of the skin, which is the dermis. The dermis consists of two major tissue types, which is the uh, upper portion and areolar connective tissue, the two-sided tape that forms the papillary layer and connects it to the epidermal pegs above, and the dermis below it, which is dense irregular connective tissue. Anchoring the dermis to the hypodermis down below, if we keep this general, uh, would and the hypodermis is mostly adipose connective tissue, um, would be the bottom of the dermis. And so the dermal layer is the anchor to the fascia and vat layer of the hypodermis or subcutaneous layer below it. The fat would be sitting on the surface of muscle and as we go deeper, we would go layer by layer in toward the, uh, the, the lining or lumen of the structures further in. Here is the, uh, the adipose or the innermost layer, uh, sorry, innermost layer of the hypodermis this is the layer that connects the hypodermis and dermis here. And often the Piscinian corpuscle is an indicator because it can either be in the top of the hypodermis or bottom of the dermal layer. Uh, now if we go specific back up to the epidermis, the epidermis is consisting of, uh, if it's thick skin like here, consists of five layers. The bottom single layer of cells is the, uh, is the, stratum, bas uh, sorry, the stratum basale or the stratum germinativum. It's the mitotically active layer and it is the um, layer that is going to also have, in addition to the keratinocytes that form these layers, it will have melanocytes producing melanin or the pigment that protects us against UV light uh, in all other areas of the skin other than you know, within our palms of our hands. There's a different pigment produced in the palms of the hands that is a keratin, it's a yellowish color to it. Um, the pigment that we find associated with the other layers of the, uh, and melanocytes in the um, epidermis of thin skin, um, would be uh, melanin, obviously. Okay, so now as we look at specialized structures or specialized layers associated here, we have that bottom layer, stratum basale, or the basal layer. Above that is four to ten layers of cells, which is the stratum spinosum, which is uh, the book characterizes this as a um, layer that has um, got spicules or spiked uh, type of, of appearance to it, spiny appearance, because the melanin is diffusing readily through those layers, uh, ten layers of cells. As it, as it uh, migrates or diffuses um, apically towards the surface, it's going to stop in this last layer of, uh, of you know, four to eight layers of cells, which is the stratum granulosum. So the last living layer of cells you see here or here is the granulosum layer. And then as these cells are, de are dying and being pushed out into the stratum corneum, um, they either will have in the palms of the hands and soles of the feet an added layer of you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 cells thick of dead packed cells in the stratum lucidum here or here uh, and that's in those two locations or it'll cover the surface of your body there will be no stratum lucidum and you'll just have the stratum corneum like we see out here with the layers that contain hair follicles within it. So uh, once again we have five layers in thick skin which is the stratum basale or germinativum stratum spinosum above that, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum is the first dead layer, and stratum corneum is the thick layer that's sloughing off uh, and 
abundant if uh, LUFA was not used and exfoliation occurred. Um, if you look at the thin skin on either side here, that's associated with hair follicles. And you see that there's a duct of a gland that, that comes all the way up through that layer on either of these, thick or thin, that will be a single gland by itself from resulting or coming from the lower reticular portion of the dermis. This is a thermoregulatory gland um, that is a merocrine gland. It releases by exocytosis and it releases onto the surface of the skin to, to uh, cool our surface. Also at the layer where these two things come together, the, the epidermis and dermis, you see that the areolar layer right there and all these sperm cell looking things, these are actually touch receptors, Meisner's corpuscles and thick skin in the dermal papillae and the dermal papillae are our fingerprints. Here's a nice view of those dermal papillae here or here and the Meisner's corpuscles that are found in them for fine touch reception. All right, so again, epidermal pegs from above joined to the dermal papillae. These are our fingerprints. And in thick skin, there's no waterproofing that we would use the oil producing glands, sebaceous glands on our surface. So we add the stratum lucidum to the layering so it's five layers thick and uh, still doesn't work too well. Our hands will swell up in, if we're in water for too long. But however, um, the gland that we're looking at that goes all the way through every layer is the thermoregulatory sudoriferous gland that's a merocrine gland, releases by exocytosis. Another sudoriferous gland, um, since we're on glands, that releases by, by pinching off the apical surface of it is an apocrine gland. Since this is a, a composite slide, this is adding in everything that should be there, but normally they would, this would only be found pinching off its product and its sweat uh, containing pheromones in the axillary regions or of your armpits and groin. It would be active during stress and during, uh, time, and during puberty um, and associated with sweating only in those areas. It's not thermoregulatory in any way though. Um, if, as we look at the last type of gland, it's this gland that's the, probably the most superficial of the glands. Uh, it's found also connected to a hair as would be this apocrine gland in those axillary regions. This merocrine gland was the only type of gland that's not connected to a hair follicle and goes to the surface of the skin. This gland is a, uh, that we see on the hair follicle producing sebum is a holocrine gland. It's a sebaceous gland that produces oil. That's what the sebum is. And it releases it to the surface of the hair, uh, which takes it to the surface of the skin. And that actually helps to waterproof proof us by adding to the stratum corneum and the dead layering of cells there so that we don't get into a bathtub and become hypotonic and swell up uh, like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Uh, this, is the, um, this is the hair follicle itself. Notice that all of the tissue that, that we had up here in the epidermal layer has extended down into and created the outer surface and the hair itself. These cells in the epidermis are called keratinocytes and the major protein that's released from them as these cells die in the corneum layer is, uh, is keratin keratohyaline granules to be uh, specific. The, that grows granules in those cells, keratin within it, form the hair follicle. So this is an avascular structure and it's provided blood supply by the papillae that we see here fed in from the dermal layer and hypodermal layer respectively. Uh, on this hair follicle, um, helping with thermoregulation would be the erector pili, smooth muscle. Notice it's on the same side as the sebaceous gland here. And as that muscle contracts, it would be producing heat or heat production would occur and our hair would stand upright we would get goosebumps and that helps to uh, thermoregulate as we go outside into cold temperatures uh, so the dermal layer then where we find all these specialized structures glands hair follicles papilla um, erector pili smooth muscle uh, is going most of that is in the reticular layer the bottom 80 percent of the dermis the top 20% uh, would be the papillary layer where we find that interface between epidermis and dermis. Then uh, down deep, uh, the layer that would be affected by, by third degree burns and eliminating all of the dermal and epidermal layers above it um, would feed down into the hypodermis or what we refer to as the subcutaneous layer of fat. This is the, um, the layer that is anchoring the muscle deep to it to the layers of the skin superficial to it. Study. That's all.